you have a story that you tell yourself. I'm driving to work to go sing for somebody, and somebody cuts me off. It's a big black limousine. This is true. And the story I would tell myself normally would be, what is wrong with that person? How dare they cut me off? Who do they think they are? Because it's a long black limousine and it has you know, black covered windows. You can't see who's in there. Like, who's that big shot in there? My grandmother used to always say, the big shot. Who was that big shot in there? And I would be really angry by the time I got where I was going. So when I thought about it, I have the power to change my story, to change that expectation I have about that drive. So here's what I did. I said to myself, another day when someone cut me off, I said to myself, OK, the reason they cut me off is because they're racing to a nearby nursing home where their mother is there. They want to get to her. She has Alzheimer's. And they really need to get to her soon. And they just forgot what they were doing. And in that limousine, I told myself, was George Clooney. <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, I have to get you I happen to think next to my dear darling husband who's standing right back there in the back that George Clooney is the next most handsome man in the world. <laughs> so in my little new story, I thought to myself, OK, I followed the, um, the uh, limousine to the nursing home. And it happened to be a nursing home where I had performed. And I got out of the car, and George Clooney got out of his car. Now, my father had Alzheimer's, and his mother has Alzheimer's. So we bonded over the Alzheimer's of our parents. And George and I fell in love right there in the nursing home. <laughs> now, here was the thing. You know that George is not married. And I am married. So there was nothing we could do about it, but we could just gaze at each other across the table and sigh and moan. And George loved me so much that he decided, even though he couldn't marry me, he would leave me a lot of money for my career. So I could make new CDs. <laughs> I could be on Broadway, he come to the show for me. I mean, it was fabulous. I was traveling all over the world. My husband, too, was coming. And then every time George and I would meet, we would just stare at each other. And occasionally, our hands touched, and the electric shock went up our arms. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So now I'm happy when I'm driving, you understand. I'm very happily driving as I'm spinning this new story. Now, here's the end of the story. At the end of the story, there's Bob, my husband. Here's me, and here's George. And we're all in a nursing home together, because now we're old. Is whether Bob died or George died first, I would get the other one, and there was a 50 50 chance I would get George for my remaining years. <laughs> so I told myself this story, and I was so happy. By the time I got to my gig, I sang for those kids, I couldn't stop smiling because I had told myself a new story. So you too have the power to tell yourself, we all do, to tell yourself a new story about what's ever happening in our lives, even if it's Bad. Even if bad things are happening under here, we can still experience.